Hello everybody, it's Dean Spellabean, back on your screen, playing some Minecraft on the OCSMP server. Anyways, I got something I want to do. So last episode, I was working on the door for a little while, which... That was pretty cool and all, but I think I got... Find something. I got kind of annoyed working on it for a while, so I think I'm going to take a bit of a break from it and work on something else. And that something else is uh, just um, a farm. Do I not have cocoa beans? Do I just not have cocoa beans? And not just any any farm, but like just uh, a big bunch of farms. Which, uh, oh there's some cocoa beans. Which uh, will make more sense later on. I just need some stuff. Do I want a kelp farm type thing? Maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so, a uh, farm that I want to make is with pumpkins, melons, beetroots, potatoes, carrots, cocoa beans, wheat seeds, and sugarcane. Now, as for where I was at, it's actually like in the uh, opportunity base that I was making. And it's just over here. You can kind of see the wheat farm from here. Yeah, I worked on this like some episodes ago, just as a side project, and I kind of liked it. And uh, also made this farm area here that, uh... <laughs> I guess a bunch of the sheep just ate like all the grass here. Also, I don't know the exact specifics, but uh, sheep have just been devouring grass on the whole server. I mean, they do that normally, but like, this is a little abnormal. <laughs> I mean, you could argue that there's more sheep than the grass can regenerate, which probably. But uh, if I fly up for a little bit, I have no idea why this happens. My best guess is that, for whatever reason, sheep are eating away at the grass, and the grass isn't growing back correctly. And it's only really coming back slowly but surely while I'm here, so I wonder if the server has a different range for when sheep can eat grass to where grass can grow back, depending on where the player is. I, yeah, I'm going too technical. <laughs> But uh, stuff that I want to do while I'm here, I want to make more farms, just to make this more of a farmville. And uh, maybe after I make some farms, I might try to get this village over here improved, because it's pretty much a bare bones village that I think got a bunch of its inhabitants killed off at some point. The only villagers that I have found in this area at all <laughs> are in very precarious situations, like that guy. I have no idea how he's still alive. As well as, if I can find them... Yeah, here they are. <laughs> These two. So there's like only three villagers in this entire village. I think all of the rest of them got killed or something. But yeah, today, main thing I want to do is just make some farms in this area, make it a bit more lively. I would say that I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing, but I got a pretty good idea of what I want. I think we'll start off strong and do a sugarcane farm. Uh, shouldn't take too long with that one. So I'm thinking for a sugarcane farm, I'm going to kind of flatten this area out, just so we can kind of get on the level of the water here. Or maybe even like a little bit lower and then have like a uh, an aqueduct go into all the sugar canes. Now you see normally, uh, normal people would just uh, make a little farm thing and just call it a day. Meanwhile there's me who's like, well yeah I could do that or I could make it look nice. And that's how I got that wee farm. I mean, and if we go up here real quick, you got like a little pond thing with some water flowing down. And then there's even a little pond over here. That's from like another reservoir at the top here. I don't really need this detail, but it looks nice. So I added it in. So now I got to do some similar over here pretty much. So not that much time later, 
Got a got a little bit of a flat area. Might be two flat to my liking, it's hard to tell. Main idea is trying to have a sugarcane farm thing here, like uh like having little pathways that go along here. I'll see if I can just make it actually. Not entirely sure how it'll end up looking, but this is I guess the idea that I want. I do think I want to take the sugarcane out a bit more in this direction. And actually, I might have some of the water in like this. I guess, random fun fact, the amount of time it takes for sugarcane to grow is about the same as it takes for cactus to grow. That is to say, it takes an eon. And this is only relevant for those that were here for my cactus farm video, because that's kind of that's kind of how I compared how long it takes cactus to grow. And the only real way to increase how much sugar king or cactus that you get is just to have more of it. So that's just what I'm gonna have to do. Oh, wandering trader, what do you got for me? Got <laughs> a skulk block. Yeah. Nice little selection here, all things considered. Oh, speaking of cactus and sugar king. Uh, thank you, but I already have, like, farms for that, so... Okay. <laughs> he drives a hard bargain, that's for sure. Oh, and sugarcane's starting to grow. That's pretty nice. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if this might be an issue, but later, when it gets to three... Oh, yeah, that will bounce over. In that case, I might just extend this out by one. And then just going underwater, trying to... kind of make this look good, different from down here. Doubt I'll actually notice these things, but it's nice to add the little details. Quick look from the sky... Ah! Yeah, I kind of like that. So, what uses do sugarcane have? Well, we can make paper out of them which can be useful later when I make my library, where I'll probably need a bunch of sugar cane. I can also use it for sugar, which I think the only real use is for sugar. So there's potion brewing, where you can make speed potions. You can also make fermented spider eyes, which will reverse any potion effects, with some exceptions, but whatever. So it's mostly used in potion crafting, but you can also use it to make a pumpkin pie? I think you can make it with pumpkin pie. Okay, so we got the wheat farm down there, and we got the sugarcane farm, and I'm thinking on having something on the top there. I'm thinking beetroots. Although beetroots aren't very useful, but it's nice that I kind of have it, I just kind of want it. Because I... Do I want potatoes back there, along with carrots back there? Because it would fit with having wheat next to the potatoes, and man, this is getting disorienting. I'm just trying to theory craft where I want things. Oh, oh yeah, look, all that grass is back. Hmm, kind of wonder the specifics of how the grass grows. Back. Oh, whatever. Okay, final idea. I'm gonna have potatoes and carrots somewhere back here, with cocoa beans behind the wheat farm towards the cattle farm, beetroot on that island on top. And pumpkins and melons, where do I want those? I mean, I want pumpkins and melons mostly because it kind of fits in with the whole thing. Even though we already have a giant pumpkin melon farm here to see if Grizzly, thank you man. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to do that. We'll start with a beetroot farm there. And just uh, get, go from there. <laughs> Alright, some amount of time later, got, uh, got a little platform island thing for the beetroots. And, uh, oh, I guess I'm gonna just just get right into it. So, uh, uses for beetroot, there's not that many actual reasons for it. I think you can use it to make some red dye, but it doesn't really offer much in terms of food, so it's kind of a somewhat useless farming item. However, I do really like how beetroot looks. 
and it's a farming item in general, so might as well add it to Farmville. Speaking of stuff to add in, and I don't think I'm going to get into it this episode, I want to add in some mycelium farm, as well as mushroom farms, like having a mushroom forest. Problem with mycelium is that there's no mycelium on the server, as far as I know. Uh, I've searched this world far and wide, and I haven't found a single mushroom island. I should probably go on some like huge expedition one day just to find it. Some mushrooms can grow on mycelium regardless of light level, so if I can get some mycelium that would be nice. The problem with mycelium is that it like overtakes grass really easily. So if I do have grass just kind of lying around, mycelium it just kind of grows over it. So if I do have like a mycelium farm forest type thing, I need to have some barrier around it. And to solve that problem, I was going to put up a... what was it called? The uh, end chorus fruit, that's what it was, chorus fruit. Fortunately, you can grow those anywhere as long as you have end stone under them. So, I'll probably just go get some end stone, get some chorus fruit, and make a chorus fruit forest around a mushroom forest. I'm not really sure where to put that right now, but I'm not getting into that this episode. I'll do it some other time. That might be an interesting build. I do kind of wonder how this whole, uh, Farmville thing that I'm working on will end up looking like. Although that's going to be hard to tell till I actually, you know, complete it. But with how things are going at the moment, I'm, I'm sure it'll look really nice. I can never understand why these pillagers keep, like, trying to do anything. Alright, fight me pillagers. Actually, can you shoot your captain for me? Mostly so I don't get the really annoying debuff. There we go. You don't want to kill the captain because you'll get a really annoying debuff that can cause a pillager raid if you're near villagers. And, uh... Well... Oh, I know there's like only three villagers here at all, but that's still enough to trigger a raid, and I don't want to start a raid right now. I wonder how much beetroot is too much beetroot. Although, uh, I've asked myself how much is too much many times, and uh, I've never found the answer to that. How big should a door be? I don't know, how big do you want it to be? <laughs> I want it to be the size of a mountain. Alright. We'll make it the size of a mountain. Makes a door the size of a mountain. Regrets it slightly. Hey, you wanted to do this. Uh, that's true, I did want to do this. What do you want to do? I want to make a farmville. With a bunch of farms. Ah, yes. Very original today. It will look really cool, though. That is true. But how cool do you want the farm? Uh, good question. I want it to be cool. But not cool, just cool. There's a distinction between the two? Uh, there is to me, apparently. Okay, I think I've got a nice little farming area here. Probably will do adjustments here and there on where torches are. Alright, where do I want the next quick time lapse to be at? Uh, probably around here, kind of between the wheat and sugar cane. Having like a little pathway to get back here, and then have like. Uh, I'm thinking a potato farm on the both sides of the river, and then maybe a carrot farm over there? Yeah. Oh well. Uh, I'll get to working on that and see what that all looks like. Alright, I made a little walkway It goes along the river. I might do some adjustments later on. Now I gotta work on getting potatoes here. Let's see, is this enough room for potatoes? I think I need to go down here. Hmm, yeah, I guess I'll fill in this little cave area. Not exactly a big fan of just uh, covering up holes and then just leaving them there. As in, like, most of the time, whenever people make giant builds like these, they just kind of 
cover the landscape and not really fill in their holes. I understand that because this takes a lot of time, effort, and resources to fill in holes. However, it does end up feeling a lot nicer knowing that it's not hollow underneath. And I mean, I have a ton of blocks anyway, so I might as well use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think this is enough room for potatoes. Alright, time to start... Potatoing! Minecraft Potato Facts with Dean Spillabean. Potatoes are not made of beans. This is a fact. Other facts is that they're one of the only other useful uh, crops in the game, something like that. As in, uh, potatoes and wheat are probably the best ways to actually get food in the game. Well, in terms of like growing it, obviously. Unless you count golden carrots, but you need to you need to get gold and then combine it with carrots, and then you get the actual best food in the game. But uh, other than that, potatoes and wheat are pretty much a go-to. Main benefits with potatoes is that you get a lot of potato per potato. You can then use this mini potato per potato in order to get baked potatoes, which you get by baking potatoes, as you may guess. Downside with potatoes is that uh, there's not that many other options besides baked potatoes. But if you don't have many other options, potatoes are pretty good. This is also where having a netherite hoe comes in handy, just in case I want to do stuff like this for a while. I remember at some point, way back in 1.7, they were like, hey, let's make the hoe attack really fast, so it like attacks really fast. As opposed to like other things that take a bit to attack. And oh, the, uh, the hoe is going to be so different, but then they didn't give it any more attack, and it just does one damage. <laughs> So like, sure, it attacks fast, but we can also punch with a potato and it does as much damage. really wish the game devs would do more to add some unique weapons or like options for fighting, but they tried that some time ago in the 1.9 update and people didn't like that. I'm kind of wondering if the developers are in a state of, oh, we can't do anything anymore because whatever we do, the player base will hate it. Maybe that's true, but maybe it's because the only options that you gave us as like things that you're doing aren't that good. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to talk about that. I mean, I don't think Minecraft really needs that many fighting options. It's a very casual game, and if you really want more fighting options, you can just add them in using different data packs or whatever code you feel like adding in. All that's to say, it's not too big of a deal. It's just. It's, it's a shame that that's not as good. It's not as good as it could be, is what I'm trying to say. I guess on the topic of updates and just adding stuff into the game, I wonder what kind of stuff they're adding in into the next update. Well, there's going to be a camel, and there's going to be a new bookshelf and some other random things. I'm more interested in the bookshelf thing, because that actually allows people to store books in the shelves instead of just having a decorative bookshelf. Although I'm only really excited for it because that really would help my uh, underwater library build that I want to work on. But I can never figure out a way to properly store books without it looking weird. So um, yeah, the bookshelf thing will help that greatly. My guess is that they're trying to add in new ways to tell stories, just a bunch of small things that will allow people to spread information better, or just in general ways to tell stories. Which annoyingly enough kind of fits with a update that they mentioned, being the archaeology update, where people will just go on little adventures to find artifacts in the ground and make stories out of those artifacts. Which, uh, cool idea, it's just the problem is that it's not out yet, and we have heard nothing about it ever since. Although I've always thought about, in terms of stuff to add to the game, what could be added in to the server just to add, like, diversity a little bit. One idea was just having, like, another tier of upgraded tools, like something above netherite or something like that. Except so, I don't know how do you make something more powerful than netherite tools and just uh, not make it like a must-have thing. It, I mean, there's basically no reason to get an upgraded tools unless I really want to go out of my way to get those tools to look really cool. But till then, it's kind of no purpose. 
Oh, I've got a pickaxe that has unlimited durability. Oh, that's pretty cool, but we also have that already. With, like, many pickaxes that just don't break. And we got a number of XP farms everywhere, so we can just uh, fix all of our tools incredibly easily. So they basically have infinite durability, as long as we don't accidentally break them. All that's to say, I don't know what kind of new tool or weapon they could add in to make things any more different, or have a reason to add things in without adding in problems. Although I think in terms of updating the game and adding new features, adding just more options in general is a really good idea. Which might also be why Mojang's trying to go for a more general story type additions to the game. Kind of like how Mojang's trying to add in bookshelves or just other things to add story elements into the game. That could be why they're adding those in and not any new weapons or armor or tools, whatever. Not to say they can't, I mean they add in a netherite weapons as like an upgrade to diamond armor stuff. Well anyways, break from story time. I got the potato farm area kind of done. Still need to work on like getting some walling on the sides there. Just need to go get some wood for that. How does it look from the sky? Eh. Maybe a little jagged, but I do need to work on getting like wood around the walls and also lily pads for the river. And now I guess I gotta wait for all the potatoes to grow so I can plant more potatoes. But in the meantime, I guess I could also work on carrots, which I think I'll have on this side of the river. You know what that means? Time lapse for carrots. And then I'll get back to talking. Honestly, I'm never 100% sure how any of my farm things are going to look like. I mean, I've, okay, I've said this before, I just don't know. Most of the things that I do are pretty much unplanned, except for a idea, and then I just kind of roll with it pretty much. So, since I'm talking about just random facts of random stuff, uh, uh, carrots are about as useful as carrots are. <laughs> Although carrots pretty much only exist to make golden carrots, so I'm not sure if there's any other use for them. Well, in that case, what are golden carrots used for? Uh, those are made for night vision potions and uh, as a really good food source. Of course, it's not really worth it to make golden carrots because it just costs way too much gold. But that's where uh, villagers come in. Oh, speak, speaking of which, right this way, sir. I do this with like every single villager zombie thing that I find. Uh, I guess we can have him here. All right, uh, right this way, sir. Okay. Anyways, back to carrots. Uh, golden carrots are really good, and they give—they don't give the most amount of food, only going like three hunger points. But they have a secret thing where they give bonus saturation, which basically means you don't have to eat them as much. So uh, it does make for a very nice food source that way. Other uses for carrots? Uh, you can trade them to villagers and you can get emeralds out of them. <laughs> That's kind of it. And it feels like the more I try to explain what kind of uses things have, the more I realize how few uses they have to. I guess I'm not a fan of how few things there are to the game, actually. Although that being said, I'm thinking on making a mushroom forest at some point, which also doesn't have much of a use, but it would look really cool. So is Minecraft just a cycle of making stuff that looks cool? At least that's what I think. It's not really a survival game, per se, but uh, it is a very fun, do-whatever-you-want type of game. Because in comparison, I don't really know that many games that, oddly enough, don't have that much content, but are still played to such an extent. Okay, let me clarify. There are games like Minecraft, as in it's a survival game where you fight against some enemies, 
get yourself better gear so that you can survive against stronger enemies, that kind of stuff. Of course, there's games like those, but like Minecraft feels entirely unique <laughs> just because it doesn't have all of that. I mean, there's obviously bosses in the game or like enemies to fight, but there's it's not much of a requirement, if that makes any sense. Not that a game's bad for having mechanics like that, where you have to go fight stronger and stronger enemies to gain more and more power. But uh, to me, it feels like it just doesn't make sense. Sure, let's go fight the stronger boss guy so that I can get the really powerful Omega item to become uh, overpowered as, as and become a boss of my own. <laughs> At some point, you get to where I would call the Seisma Syndrome based off of the uh, Saitama character from One Punch Man, where you just become so powerful that uh, nothing can touch you, and you just lose all meaning in life because you can't have any conflict. Which is a little bit heavy for a topic, but it does kind of pair with a bunch of these games, where you just become so powerful that nothing can fight you. And then there's nothing else to grow into. Focusing too much on the whole fighting aspects leaves you with... Uh, not much else to do. <laughs> I gotta go repair my nether hoe at some point. And I know I keep mentioning this in like... practically every video at this point, but not just everybody can play the game, because it gets to a point where there's not much you can do for sure. There isn't a checklist of enemies to defeat. Maybe there is. Maybe you want to kill one of every boss type. Or one of every enemy in general. There are achievements to get. And just complete for fun. They don't offer much outside of just completing them. But they are things to do that's on a checklist. However, making a giant elaborate farm with multiple plant types all over the place. That's not on a checklist. I just kind of put that there. So maybe to be a bit more accurate, I'm not a huge fan of checklists in general, which is why I like playing Minecraft, or at least that's my theory. And I guess something to kind of be fair, uh, there are mods for Minecraft to where if uh, the developers won't add in the content to make the game interesting, we'll just add the content in ourselves. It's not a uniquely Minecraft thing, but it does help Minecraft stay relevant. Oh man, I gotta be careful how much I talk because there's only so much content I can talk about without it being uh, seen as being bloated. You know what, I think I'm gonna save myself and uh, work towards the next area so that I can have more stuff to talk about. Well, what do I want to farm next? Hmm. Okay, how many more plants do we got? We got melons, cocoa beans, and pumpkins left. You know what? Let's do cocoa beans. That, that might be interesting. So to actually get cocoa beans to grow, you need to use jungle wood and put the cocoa beans on those. Problem is, is that there aren't, there's not a lot of jungle wood around here, which is what these saplings are for. Basically just going to make a little jungle forest here and then grow cocoa beans in them. So that might be interesting. Quick time lapse and then I'll get back to talking. So a bit of time later, I wanted to do something a little different and just added a uh, like ravine type thing under here. Same thing with the other parts of the build, I'm gonna probably add to it later. But uh, anyways, jungle trees. I might get some bone meal real quick. Luckily I always get a bunch of spare seeds, so I can just turn them into bone meal. Alright, cocoa beans, how they work. You put them on the sides of jungle trees, and eventually they'll grow into full beans. I find it funny that I spend so much time on the other farms, and then this one's not very much, basically. I guess officially, Dean's Bean Shop is now open. Uh, technically. <laughs> so way, way back in the early days of the server, I opened up a bean shop. 
Okay, I kind of go enough of the Dean Spillabean thing. But for the longest time, I was out of stock because I had no idea what to sell. So, I I didn't have stock. Eventually, it turned into Dean's various collection of beans shop. That's the white tent that's near spawn. Don't do too much with it nowadays, mostly because business is a bit slow. But I check the shop every now and again in case something gets sold. You know what, this is probably a huger mite type thing. I might make an area specifically as a tree farm. Make it a bit more of a free form tree farm than what is at my spawn base. Although with how I'm arranging everything, I'm not sure. Is it already fully grown? No, no way is it already fully grown. What? That, did, that didn't take too long at all. I honestly thought these would take way longer, but I guess not. I wonder, can you bone meal these? <gasps> you can bone meal them. I, no, I wasn't. I'm not sure why I thought you couldn't. Well, uh, eventually beans will grow, and I'll place them on all these various trees. Uh, I got one more issue now. So we got the cocoa bean farm here. I think I need something to surround it. And I could probably put the melon pumpkin farm over there, but maybe I could also just leave it as it is and then see how that goes. Yeah, let's see if I can reposition myself. I guess I can't reposition myself today. Well, really, really wish that it would make more sense on when you will or will not take fall damage. <laughs> Anyways, looking up here, I might extend the carrot farm down to here, and I mentioned that I would, but I might actually, and then have a pathway to go into this little valley and turn this into a pumpkin melon farm. That might look nice. But why are you all here? Why? Jeez. Gosh. Jeez. You know what? Fine, you guys can just exist because I can't kill you, otherwise uh, the, the captain will call in a, a raid. Actually, quick thinking. I have cows. So just to kind of show how stupid this whole mechanic is, you can get rid of the debuff with milk. Alright. Where are you guys? Now I will kill you because I have milk. Are they just gone? I guess they're just gone, never mind. Well, I don't need this milk anymore. But I think I'm just going to survive with this brain injury that I have in my head. Ow, these arrows! I think that's just going to be the plan. Gonna time lapse. I'm just like, can I get that arrow? I <laughs> find that arrow is right in my eye. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna go into a, another time lapse thing just to get the pumpkins melons done, and then once I get that done, my, that'll probably be the end of the episode. So let's get it over with real quick. So a bit of time later once again, I still haven't installed the extra carrots, but I'll probably do that later. I might even put the carrots way up here on this little ledge, but up here is where I'm going to be putting the pumpkins and melons. Honestly this might not be as much room as I want, but I think it should be fine. I mean probably when I'm done I'm going to terraform some things in my free time, just make them look a little bit nicer. Not entirely sure how my landscaping skills measure up with like everything else, but uh, I do think landscaping stuff or terraforming in general is one of my favorite pastimes. You know what? Now that I think about it, it kind of measures up because one of my other favorite pastimes is digging a hole, which is like terraforming, but down. <laughs> I just realized I don't have any pumpkins or melons. I, I know where to find some. <laughs> there they are. Jeez, I never noticed how bright Grizzy's place is when, until it's like nighttime. He really lit up the place, goodness. <laughs> like, like, look how bright that is compared to everything else. <laughs> oh, and I didn't notice this until I like got into recording or editing stuff, sorry. Uh, I didn't actually give the facts about cocoa beans. So with cocoa beans, you get beans, they're cocoa beans, you can use them to make brown dye or cookies. 
And that's basically all the uses. <laughs> it's probably why I didn't really talk about it in the section that I was actually planting the cocoa beans. But uh, cocoa beans are basically just brown dye and cookies, and that's kind of it. Anyways, now that cocoa beans have been caught up, uh, what uses do pumpkins and melons have? Well, fortunately a few more uses. Uh, pumpkins are used to make golems, and are also used in uh, pumpkin pie recipes. So there's the iron golems that, that you might have seen here and there. Uh, you can make those normally if you have... Now imagine these are iron blocks. You put them all here, and then you put a pumpkin on top and you get a golem. Or if you have snow, you have two blocks of snow with a pumpkin on top and you get a snow golem. And for the most part, uh, iron golems are more useful than snow golems, mostly because uh, snow isn't that durable. And then uh, other, other things with pumpkins, you can turn them into carved pumpkins, and then you can get, and then you can put them on your head, and all of a sudden you have protection against endermen. Which not entirely sure how that works, and basically you just put them on your head, and uh, if you look at an Enderman now, you don't get jump scared by them, basically. <laughs> and then final use is for pumpkin pies, which, uh, well, they're pumpkin pies. Not much else to say about that. I'm not entirely sure if I just want to make a whole grid pattern for the pumpkins and melons, like a giant checkerboard pattern. But uh, now that I'm thinking about it, that might actually look cool, so might as well just go along with it. And then as for melons, uh, you can turn them into glistening melons, which can then be used to make healing potions. So that's just the main uses for pumpkins and melons, but the other huge use, and why Grizzly made that giant pumpkin melon farm over there, is to trade pumpkins and melons to villagers and gain a ton of emeralds from them. I doubt I'll make near as much of a profit as Grizzly did with his gigantic farm, but I wanted to add in all of the plants to this area, so might as well add them in. Now for those that don't know how pumpkins and melons grow in Minecraft, we get this itty bitty tiny little seed, you can kind of see it there. Eventually it grows into a full stem, and then it has a choice of uh, which direction to grow the pumpkin or melon. And giving it all four sides to grow on has a huge chance of it just uh, popping out really quick. So actually having the pumpkins and melons in a grid pattern is probably the best way to farm them in terms of, like, conserving space or something. So something I just thought about, uh, Mojang, the developers, at some point were like, hey, we're gonna add in the sniffer, and you can get these cool ancient seeds allowing you to grow ancient plants from a bygone era or something like that. At the time of me recording and making this video, we have no information on what these seeds even are, we just know that it's a thing that the sniffer is able to do. And well, uh, I really hope that they actually do something with that just to give us more plants. Because if they give us more plants to work with, we can have more uh, variety of foliage everywhere. And of course I can add to my farm. Or I guess it's not just my farm that can be improved, anyone's farm can be improved if there's more things to farm. I kind of wonder by the end of this how many pumpkins and melons I'll have. I mean, I could do the math, but I think uh, visuals speak a lot more. Uh, how many pumpkins and melons do you farm? Approximately uh, this many, and then I just show them the farm. Of course, there's no numbers there, and it's hard to quantify exactly how many. Man, why am I using quantify in a case where I'm just making a farm? Jeez. You know, I just thought of this with like this whole grid pattern thing. Uh, Minesweeper, anybody? <laughs> Okay, funny story, and I'll probably get done with the story by the time I get done with this. So I'm at college. It was for a uh, security networking program type thing. I forget the exact class, but we were basically learning the ins and outs of protocols on just computer programs in general, whatever, computer stuff. And at one point we kind of reached a bit of a problem where we needed to wait for a bunch of stuff to download before we could get on to working. And uh, for whatever reason, the computers that they provided all of us were extremely slow. So, because I literally had nothing else to do at the time, I tried to see if the computer had Minesweeper on it. 
And so like any person that gets bored easily, I played some Minesweeper, and then people in the class were like, what the, you know how to play that game? And I'm like, yeah, of course I know how to play it. Does, do you guys not know how to play Minesweeper? And then at some point I realized that like, almost none of those other students that were there had any idea how to actually play the game. It was just a bunch of click the button, click the button, things are happening. Not sure how the correlation works, but uh, whatever. It's kind of funny, even the teacher knew how to play it, which that makes sense because he's a computer geek, so of course he would know. But at the time, it literally baffled me that some people don't know how to play the game. Because like to me, it's just a simple numbers game where you put the numbers and hopefully don't blow up or something like that. There's tutorials online, I won't go into detail if you don't know how to play. I don't even know where I learned how to play the game. There was no instructions. I guess I got taught by someone, I don't know who exactly, and then I just got really good at playing Minesweeper. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm like the best at Minesweeper. I just love playing it because it's a fun little logic puzzle. Trying to figure out what has a bomb, what doesn't, and using logic to figure things out. Okay, I think we are at a good stopping point for the end of the episode. Just gonna walk around a little bit, just look at what I've made. Cause this looks pretty cool, all things considered. I think once I get all of this filled in, like all the carrots filled, all the pumpkins and melons grown, I'm going to have like a little footage bit that just kind of shows it all. Actually, I'm gonna show it right now. Whoa! Whoa, look at that. Look at how beautiful it is. I have no idea what it looks like. Although, uh, currently, I don't actually have the footage done, so I'm just going to actually work on getting that done, getting the uh, footage that you just seen done. So, uh, using time paradox shenanigans, I should be able to get that done already. Which I did, definitely. <laughs> But I think that's going to end the episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, at least some amount. And, uh, well, you all have a good night. So, funny thing. I was trying to click replay, but I accidentally had my auto-clicker on. The whole reason why I have an auto-clicker is just so I don't have to hold down my mouse button. Because apparently holding down your mouse button for several hours can probably damage the mouse and cause you to get a new one. So I use an auto-clicker just so I don't have to do that. Anyways, I might have clicked the uh, replay button a few too many times. Okay, I have minimized my GUI a little bit. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, delete. Click. Delete. Delete. <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm looking over at File Explorer, and there's 41 instances. Oh gosh. Well, luckily, I think I can just, just click that, click that, and delete. And then. Oh, good, it's all gone. Okay, crisis averted.